Welcome back to today's video. Today we're going to re-ask the question rather, should you install Windows on your Steam Deck? A lot of people did this towards the beginning of the life of the Steam Deck, especially right when Valve released all those drivers and AMD released all those drivers. But I feel like with the release of the OLED Steam Deck, there's going to be a lot of new people to the community that uh, haven't, you know, looked at any Steam Deck stuff. A lot of new owners of the Steam Decks who might want to install Windows. And so I thought about really digging in and trying to see whether or not you should do this because I've been thinking about it to do it for a while. It's my first time installing Windows on my Steam Deck and I just want to see if it's worth it. So just to jump in, the experience of first of all getting Windows onto it. There are multiple ways to get Windows onto your Steam Deck. You can dual boot, you can either just have a different SD, uh, like a, either a micro SD card or a uh, full on SSD with the OS um, downloader onto it. You can manually install uh, Windows 11 through the USB-C port and a, a USB key. Uh, personally, I tried doing it a cheaty way. I had a laptop uh, and I that I just took the SD out on SD, the SSD out of it and put it into the Steam Deck and thinking it would just boot right into Windows. It did not. It did not like doing that purely because of my laptop having a bunch of weird like Dell like BitLocker security shit on it that sort of fucked the whole thing up. So I had to reinstall Windows from there. Like I didn't have to go like get a USB key and like re-download and all that, but I had to basically factory, factory reset that installation losing a bunch of information. That wasn't incredibly important. It was just old video files and stuff like that. So. It wasn't that big of a deal at the end of the day, but I kind of wish I just manually installed Windows because that just would have been easier. Uh, but at least this copy of Windows is activated. So the overall installation experience wasn't too bad. I kept a separate uh, SSD with my original uh, Steam Deck OS, you know, with all my games and stuff on it uh, separate. So I can always go back to it if I want to, but uh, as you'll later find out, I, I might not be for a while. Uh, actual experience of using windows on uh, the steam deck it's a little janky because unlike a lot of other gaming handhelds the steam deck doesn't natively have a bunch of you know features that like uh, having something like is space or armory crate software stuff from the rg ally or uh, the whatever the legion software is something to like have a pop out to deal with games that you can't close without like a keyboard and mouse or games that you are crashed. It is a bit more of a jankier experience. Definitely have to use a lot of the Windows on-screen keyboard. The controls aren't always recognized in all the games. And the, of course the community has come out with a bunch of these tools that are super useful and really save the experience. Overall, it was just very tedious and not necessarily hard or even that complicated, most of these problems I had were figured out in either a day or a few hours of, of discovering or having to, you know, confront these problems. And it didn't necessarily hinder the gaming experience. If you're playing mostly Steam games, the Steam Deck controls will work, you know, 100% of the time. I haven't encountered a Steam game that doesn't natively work, figure out the Steam Deck's controls. But if you download something off of Battle.net or the EA store, the uh, Game Pass, then you might, it's hit or miss or not at all if the Steam controls will work. So the community has made a custom driver set, which I'll link down below, that you can remap and rebind and sort of disable Steam's weird control shenaniganry that really like if you, for example, when I downloaded a game off of Epic Game Store, uh, Kingdom Hearts uh, 2.5 HD Remix, uh, or whatever that is called uh, with Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 and uh, Birth by Sleep, that whole game thing. Uh, whenever I would try pushing the X button, it would start bringing up the Steam keyboard, which clearly you wouldn't want happening in Kingdom Hearts while you're playing the game. It's not necessarily something you ever need. And I couldn't get the controls to work. I couldn't even close the game. I had to restart the Steam Deck to close the game. And so I was like, well, that's a wash. And then I started doing some research, seeing other people having this problem with not just Kingdom Hearts, but all non Steam games when you're in Windows. And they, I found the controller drivers that you can find and installed it. It took like 30 seconds and then boom, 
I was it was working. I was able to play all my non Steam games very well with no controller problems. With many of the caveats of being in Windows, you may see an increase in overall gaming performance. So you don't have to, because the the way the Steam Deck works is that it uses something called Proton. Uh, that use, it's basically a transla translation layer to basically convert the Windows game files into something Linux or and or the Steam Deck can read. This is a gross oversimplification of what it is. There are much more in-depth guides or explanations what Proton does, but it's basically a translation layer that basically lets the Windows you know native games run on Linux, as, as simplified as it, it gets. And when you're playing you know, a Windows game on Windows, you don't have that translation layer. But the Steam Deck is a bit of a unique case that there's some special optimizations, either some of the developers or on the hands of Valve, for some of these games. Like Some of these games will run better in SteamOS than they did on uh, Windows. So, in my experience, it's a negligible amount. A uh, lot of the games that I would play that... I saw that you know had worse performance in Windows with updates got better on the Steam Deck and essentially now they're mostly you know some you know there's barely any difference between the performance in uh, games between on Linux and uh, Windows Linux being SteamOS so it's for me it's mostly neg negligible maybe a frame rate uh, or frame or two but there's one game where I did notice it a lot and that was uh, Borderlands 3 and Tiny Tina's Wonderland. Because Tiny Tina's Wonderland ran like an absolute dream. Having like FSR set to like ultra performance, I was able to get like 90 FPS or some shit out of that game. And Borderlands 3, I had to go through like Epic Games Store, then like the Heroic Launcher and all that stuff on it, because I ended on that, not on Steam itself, on SteamOS. And that was a whole chore to get set up. But once I did, the game ran pretty good a solid 60 fps at like 720p all low and simply the game is kind of uh was stuttery on that but it ran well enough so i didn't have to ever think about it uh on windows i was getting really choppy frame rates they were just random drops like it would be like 50 fps and then it'll drop to 8 fps for like a second then come back up it was just a, a really bad experience and it might be a solvable problem, but that is just something you wouldn't have experienced if you just had it on SteamOS. So I thought I'd share the one, you know, truly negative experience of being on Windows. On to the many benefits of having Windows on your Steam Deck instead of SteamOS. The main benefit for me was being able to download games that aren't natively supported by the Steam Deck. Because while yes, you could install things like EA Play and Epic Games Store, God damn it, was it so annoying to get those to one install, to work, be able to actually play those games. Like, I barely was able to figure out how to properly get uh, the Epic Games launcher to work in SteamOS. And even still, the games, when I, I didn't get actually get into them, they ran well. But actually getting to that point took a lot of effort on my part that just didn't have to happen on um, when I was in Windows. Yes, I had the problems with the controls, but that was solved in like 30 seconds and all the problems I had on SteamOS getting, trying to get Epic Game, non-Steam games to work was so much longer. I spent multiple days trying to get this to work and it now it only works like 50% of the time. I'm sure that is a skill issue. That's a me thing. I'm sure many others had a much easier time doing it, but that's just not something I was able to figure out. All, out of the non-Steam games, you can get even Steam games that don't uh, aren't validated for the Steam Deck. Games like Destiny 2. You can't play Destiny 2 on Steam, on the Steam Deck, without uh, being in Windows because it's the, uh, Destiny 2 has anti-cheat software, BattleEye. You can't simply play that on the Steam Deck because it'll flag Linux as a hacking software or an illegal software add-on to have when you're playing Destiny 2 and you either could get banned or the game simply won't boot. And there's a ton of these games. You can't play games like Fortnite, I believe. You can't play Call of Duty. You can't play Valorant. You can't play a ton of these massive um, Overwatch, I believe you can't play. All these major esports titles, you won't be able to play them on Steam Deck, which are almost targeted for a lower level of hardware. Not necessarily Call of Duty, but a bunch of these games are either very old 
or targeting a, a lower you know tier of pc component valorant could run on hardware from like 15 not 15 or like 10 12 years ago at this point and runs great on that and it runs great on the steam deck and not being able to play that on steam os is for some people a massive deal breaker if you really into those games and you know attribute that to the overall experience my experience with having windows on the steam deck it was annoying there, there was it's ups and downs but honestly the ease of use being able to you know just my increased familiarity with the windows ecosystem it was just so much easier to get the things i wanted to work working than it was on um, steam os the, the overall you know experience of having windows on the steam deck has improved so much since the drivers originally released uh two years ago or was it a year ago don't exactly remember but it has changed so much and it's gotten so much better so much easier too there's just a nice web page that valve has where you can download all the drivers for the micro sd card reader wi-fi bluetooth all that super easy super easy to follow guide provided by valve and drivers are being updated consistently enough so you don't have any major problems and performance is really good some games depending on what you play might run better on steam os but not so much more that it makes it a worse experience and yeah I, I highly recommend you install windows on your steam deck especially if you're getting one of the new steam decks but you're also not missing out on much if you don't so it's really dealer's choice if you like windows more than steam os go right ahead you won't be missing out on much it's an amazing experience and it's not so hard anymore to even dual boot most people have uh, dual booting apps that you can install into steam because i know steam does it natively support dual booting at the moment but hopefully it will soon and so you don't have to use any of these other tools to do so i know i'm gonna keep windows on my steam deck until i run into any major issues i might do another like a two weeks later or a, a three months later review of having windows on my steam deck but for now it's gonna stay there and i've been really enjoying it so that's the video uh, what are your thoughts? Are you going to try out Windows on your Steam Deck? Uh, have you been using Windows on your Steam Deck and you loved it? And I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments down below. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to become a member and all of that other social media garbage down below. And have a wonderful day. Deuces.